as always, a great and thought-provoking read. Uh, I wonder how you contrast where Amazon is today with where Apple is. And, and I call out Apple specifically because I know you remember Steve Jobs' trip to the Cupertino City Council. You, as I have, have watched Angela Arendt and Apple as a whole expand these retail presences around the world, doing sure. these development deals with cities. Are they any different? No, I mean, they just are here to make money. I mean, I think a lot of times they talk about these ideas of being better than other companies. But essentially, Amazon wants to expand for itself, and it wants to create a great place to do business. And if in the, in the process cities get help, that's great. But at the same time, you know, they didn't offer anything to necessarily help the city or to do something or work with it. And most companies are not as civically minded, Internet companies are not as civically minded as, say, previous companies, say, a Bank of America in San Francisco many years ago or Wells Fargo. And in the end, I think it's an important part of their job, but I think mostly they're focused on shareholder value, and, and that's what they've been focused on since the beginning. They just sort of pretend they're changing the world uh, in a lot of ways. And Kara, Kara, to that point, I mean, really you could kind of say that business goes to the path of least resistance. There was a lot of resistance in New York City. The yeah. truth of the matter is the deal that they were offered was offered by, you know, lawmakers both on the state and city level. You can make a lot of arguments that mm -hmm. maybe that deal shouldn't have been made in the first place, but it was made by them. It wasn't made by Amazon. Amazon just agreed to the deal that was put in front of them, essentially. Um, we're not seeing the same type of blowback in Virginia or Nashville, though. Why do you think that is? Well, it just depends on what the givebacks were and what was happening. And so in New York, you know, New York is a very different market. It's obviously got heavy media presence. It's got people with a lot of opinions. And what I think happened there is they struck a deal that seemed rather secretive with uh, Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo. And I think they didn't include local officials. I think, you know, the, yeah. the pressure from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, uh, who represents an adjacent community, uh, the issues around the subway there, I think it, they, got, they got caught up in local politics in a way they didn't want to deal with and, uh, and moved out very quickly, didn't want, to, didn't want to spend their time doing that. And I think that makes sense from, an, from Amazon's point of view, but it just underscores that they want to have the path of least resistance and open their warehouses that, in places that make sense for them. Not their warehouses, yeah. their headquarters in this Kara, case. Kara, what does it say to you about... Uh, Amazon's uh, government affairs unit and I mean don't companies that are somewhat sophisticated expect a bit of a hazing when they come to a city like New York? Well, they should, but they should. But I think Amazon has a lot of choices, right? So why should they even bother? I, I, you know, yes, of course, they should. That's what Bill de Blasio was saying. I mean, he was for the deal until he was against it, which is very funny to watch that go on. They're yeah. tough. They're, you know, the whole line I had, like, they're not tough enough from New York. You know, Amazon's plenty tough. They just don't want to be tough here, and they don't want to be part of it. And I think that I, I'm not surprised that they pulled out. They just don't want the headache, and they don't need well, the that's headache. That's the part I don't. All. That's the part I don't get, Kara. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, according to the polls, they had New York as a whole. They had Queens behind them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Black and Latino residents uh, favored them being there. Seventy. 80%, like if they really wanted to be in New York and believe their own argument that this is the place that they needed to be for talent, right. why didn't they just suck it up and dig in and right. uh, work with the community? I don't know. I don't know why they didn't. I mean, it's sort of New York. Forget about it. You know, like forget about it, like that kind of thing. And so uh, I don't know why they didn't. They just didn't. They didn't want to deal with it on, on many levels. And again, it's a heavy media saturated area. They've got a lot of hope, high profile figures like Ocasio-Cortez and Cuomo and de Blasio. I mean, I can't imagine that the, the people at Amazon thought anything, but this is just going to be trouble the entire way through and no one's ever going to be satisfied. Uh, maybe they thought it would be everybody would welcome them with open arms, but it's New York, which is a very, you know, also, by the way, New York is doing really well in terms of tech and things like that. There are other communities that would have really been much more accommodating to Amazon and probably, and, and of course, they're not opening another headquarters, another second headquarters, a second second headquarters. So they're just sticking with Washington and expanding their Nashville presence. And so it's sort of the whole, the whole, as you know, I've called it a circus a million times, this whole finding a headquarters thing. Um, I think they set themselves up for failure by making it such a circus. And then, you know, the circus isn't always as pretty, you know, behind the scenes as it, as it might seem initially.